everybody. It is so good to see you here. I thank you for being with us today as we worship the Lord. It is good to be in His presence. It is good to be in the presence of one another. And so uh, I want to welcome you by reading Psalm chapter 122, verse 1. And we can appreciate perhaps a little more today uh, than we have in a while what David meant when he said in Psalm 122, verse 1, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And so we are glad today to be together in the presence of our great God. And I'm so grateful today to have faces to look at, even with masks on. You look wonderful here in these views today. Uh, this is so much better than looking at the, that, the face of a camera every Sunday. So I'm so glad to have you back here. We will still have uh, guests joining us online and other members of our church watching online. So, uh, but we uh, plan to moving forward, we will phase in our worship gathering here. Uh, so we'll, we'll evaluate after today and see what else we may need to do as we move forward. But thank you for cooperating and for uh, maintaining our social distance. But I, I just look right now my arms were big enough to hug every single one of you with one great big hug. And perhaps the greater news is that is what the Lord has done for us even over the past six months, almost to the day uh, since the World Health Organization stated that this was a pandemic. God has held every one of us close in His arms and in His embrace. Amen? And not for a moment has the Lord forsaken you not for a moment has the Lord forsaken his people. And so we pray for his blessings as we gather together. I hope you have a bulletin, but I'm going to lead us in a prayer today, and then we'll uh, sing a hymn together, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We have the words for you in the bulletin. And I'm so excited about what the Lord continues to do through the ministry of Koinonia. So, Kelly, thank you for being here to share with us an after-school program update, followed by a second hymn, which is also in your bulletin. And then we have a back-to-school prayer time today, so hopefully you have the list of names that we want to pray over. And then uh, one more song about quartet, and then a very brief message from Psalm 122. So, before we see this next hymn, would you bow with me as we pray together and ask the Lord's blessings. Father, thank you so very much for the privilege to gather in your house for worship. Lord, we have seen in our lives um, what it means to not be together for so long. And we pray, Lord, not just for our church, but for other churches. We ask for your safety and provisions to continue bringing uh, wellness and good health and protection, Lord, from all over the world is facing uh, in the midst of a physical virus, but Lord, in the midst of so, so much spiritual sickness, we pray today for the wholeness and the wellness that only Christ can bring in our lives. And so Lord, we just ask you to be with us and be with our brothers and sisters here in this community and in the city and in the state and be with our brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ throughout this world. Lord, as we seek to do our best to honor you, to love you, and to proclaim your message of truth and hope. Father, we are grateful, most grateful today, for the privilege to do that here and now. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody sit together. Amen. So let's let you both know that saying that let's say the great thing is my
Okay, good talking. Good morning, everyone. Wow, I agree so much, Pastor Stephen, how good it is to be together and how alive those verses are now from the psalmist uh, about what a joy it is to be together in God's house. Um, I want to first of all thank you, Stephen. Um, before I say, um, do some koinonia updating. Um, I think you all would want to uh, join me in thanking Stephen for his leadership during this time, these last six months, and so quickly adjusting to uh, the new normal and uh, helping us to worship together through Facebook and through Zoom calls and all kinds of ways that you kept us connected. So would you all like to thank Stephen with me? <laughs> We probably have people worshiping with us today from other churches that have not had this ability to fit it like that. Uh, Stephen and uh, many who I had, I had heard you know, miss not being able to connect even in the ways that we've been able to. So um, Stephen and Rhonda and your family and Joe and Sharon and Fred, thank you for that. And um, thank you to Stephen for this opportunity to give a quick update on the point of the First of all, any Koinonia report must begin with a huge, huge, heartfelt thank you to you, Eau Claire Baptist Church, and your faithful stewardship of this building, of your God-given resources, and your action-oriented love, which we will celebrate over the past 100 years in just a few months. Because of this, and because of countless hours of devotion of servant leaders like Richard, like Carolyn, um, plenty of others, some listening maybe today on Facebook, Greenlawn Baptists and their volunteers, um, community partners, because of this type of sacrificial servant leadership and this church as a pillar in this community for so many years, pointing me up today, stands on a very firm foundation. Like in the parable that Jesus taught about the wise man who built the house of Thunder Rock. I believe that together, many of the clouds, the cloud of witnesses that surrounds us this morning that is already on the other side, there are just so many um, responsible for this moment where Koinonia can, can stand on such a firm foundation. And because of this, after these last three years of Koinonia being who we are, we have now entered a pivotal season in which we've been able to, by God's grace, to live more fully into what it means to develop community here in this neighborhood from an asset-based perspective. Um, one of the main tenets of asset-based community development, which is the model that we follow, is to nurture citizen-led action. And this is exactly what Koinonia was able to do on this foundation in mid-August when we were able to hire three new staff members, um, all of which who either live in this community, have been, have been raised in this community, or have worked in this community for years. I'd like to announce to you today that we now have a new part-time after-school program director, and his name is Mr. Tony Besson. We have a new part-time school liaison and resource specialist, and her name is Ms. Rhonda Marshall. And we have a new project-based contract type of employee named Ms. Yolanda Anderson. Uh, let me tell you just briefly about each of these individuals. Um, Tony, Tony Weston grew up in this community, attended C.A. Johnson High School, studied criminal justice at Benedict, and earned a master's in social work at the University of South Carolina. He has already been working with children and families, particularly in the Belmont community and Arden Elementary, and has been a caseworker at Transitions. Rhonda Marshall is the youth librarian, some of you might know her, here at North Main library down the way here. 
for Richland County, and she is passionate about connecting children and families uh, with all of the resources that exist in the community that many of us don't know anything about. And then Yolanda Anderson, <clears throat> you may recognize her name, she is on the Richland One School Board and often represents the voices of um, parents who often feel invisible and unheard, and she is able to um, and beautifully elevates their voice. So it's an exciting time to be able to nurture that type of citizen-led action from people who um, have lived in this community, love this community, work in this community, just like this church. So we are certainly kindred spirit together. Um, so we are in the midst of launching our virtual after-school program. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> We tried that in the spring, didn't we, with a, with a Zoom call. How many of you are tired of Zoom calls? <laughs> me too, me too. But, but it's our way of connecting, right? And uh, so we certainly don't want to lose touch with our 15 children and 10 families during a time in which they need us uh, and we need them now more than ever. And so um, our um, advisory board, we, Queen Anita developed an advisory board over the summer um, that had some board members, some, um, some of our most dedicated volunteers and community partners to help expand the after school program, um, to, to hire the new staff, to, we will, when we meet in person, we will now meet four days a week. Um, but we also, the board also discussed how does a virtual season look? And so um, we're going to be having small groups and calls throughout the week. Uh, that Tony and Rhonda will facilitate. And we are also going to try having a field trip outdoors <laughs> once a month. And our first outdoor field trip will be at the end of September, the last Saturday, September the 26th. And we will be taking the children to the community garden on the campus of the seminary. And they will be planting seven beds of collards and we decided they did so well last year, the collards did, that we would just plant all collards. So I hope you will be ready for some collards when they're harvested uh, at the holiday time. Um, and so the kids will be excited to see each other um, because probably most of them haven't since we had to stop in, uh, in mid-March our programming. So um, we will end that field trip with a picnic on the grounds of the church, here behind the church, and probably some games and things like that. Um, <clears throat> if I could just ask you to please pray um, for the Koinonia families. And <clears throat> Anna, I bet the families in your preschool, and I, Kennedy, uh, the families in your school, I mean, it's not just Koinonia families, but as you probably are aware, families are really struggling with this past week in particular was quite a week. Um, I don't know what it was about it. Maybe it's the beginning of school and the second week of the school year. Uh, but families are struggling with food shortages, food shortages, some of which we've never, that's never been an issue. Uh, and so the pantry here um, that many of you stock and at Greenland Baptist helps to stock, you have no idea how crucial that food is. Uh, and, you know, if, if you ever want to be a part of that process, I, I'm sure I don't, I'm sure that the families would welcome that if anyone wants to join some of that delivery process because there is a great need right now. Um, there's also up there other challenges uh, that have resulted from the pandemic and continue to resolve and are just becoming more and more cumulative. Uh, challenges that go along with isolation, like depression and anxiety, and just lack of the village. You know, we believe in the African proverb that it takes a village to raise a child, and the school is sort of all, you know, doing its best, beautiful job, but the school is scattered, the churches aren't meeting, I mean, after school programs, so parents are really, really have a lot to shoulder. And so if you could please just pray for our 10 families and the families everywhere. That is something that I have to remind myself the best thing that I can do. Even in the midst of all the programs and ideas and partnering and connecting um, is to just really lift them each up in prayer and one another as well. So thank you. Yes, sir. 
question for our next hymn, which we have that we'll do. And stand in as we sing one fellowship. <laughs>
Hyatt Park, those at Jackson Creek Elementary, those at Killeen Lakes, Logan Elementary, those at Monty Nelson and Meadowfield and Monte Vista, Northside Christian, those that are in all my school, those at H.P. Rain at Satchel Ford, those in the special needs programs at Duby Reed at Wood Elementary. For our middle schools today, Lord, that we have a relationship with in some measure, for Alcorn, for Clear Dot, for Gibbs, for Ann, for Green Charter, for La Colina, for Midlands Art, for Sanders, for Sanders. And Lord, today for our high school students, as many of them are getting closer to preparing for life after high school, we lift up the students of Blue Ridge, of Dreer, of Eau Claire, of Gray Collegiate, of Mid Carolina, of Keenan, of Woodmont. For those, Lord, preparing through colleges or universities, Lord, uh, we lift up Columbia International students, those at Lander, those through Midlands Technical College, those at USC of Aiken, those at North Greenville, at Gardner Webb, University of Alaska. Lord, today is our privilege to remember the many names here and the students present. Lord, for those students that are present or are watching online, Father, I pray that you empower them with the strength of your spirit to uh, do their very best in the most difficult of learning circumstances, Lord. Would you meet every need today and pray in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said together, Amen. Well, listen as our quartet sings. And then we'll spend a few quick minutes in Psalm 122.
have a Bible with you today, uh, Psalm 122, and while you're turning there, can we give a word to that hand today for you? Thank you so much. Uh, so many put work into this day, so I'm afraid I'll leave somebody out, but I thank everybody uh, who had a part in getting ready for today. Uh, Psalm 122, uh, verses 1 through 9, I promise it'll be brief. Uh, Joe ensured yesterday while we were marking off the sanctuary, he said, we've got to get batteries back in that clock right there on the back wall. So the batteries are in, the clock is working. So uh, Psalm 122, I'm going to share with you three points today about worship. And if you notice for David first, there was great joy in worship, as David says in Psalm 22, verse 1. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And ironically, this text is talking about uh, the place, the city of Jerusalem. And at this point, uh, this is in reference to the tabernacle. So before the temple was constructed, and so David is talking about his great joy over Jerusalem, the place where God's presence was known to dwell. And I pray that you have great joy today coming into this house of worship. And, and this place is representation of where God's presence dwells. And so David says in verse 2, and I want to involve, um, involve our young, young friends that are here today. So... We will um, invite anybody that is 18 age or younger. When I say the word standing, I want you to stand up as tall and as straight as you can. All right? Be ready for our youth and uh, children's day. David said in Psalm 122, verse 2, listen carefully. Our feet are standing. Our feet are standing, he said. And so they came into the Lord's house and they stood tall and they stood in the presence of the Lord. Doesn't it feel good to be standing in God's presence today? Amen? Let's give him a hand for helping me out. David said, our feet are standing within your gates of Jerusalem. There was great joy in worship, and I pray there is great joy in your worship today. And then second, I want you to see, uh, not only was there great joy in worship, but there was great desire in worship. Uh, if I could give you a, a quick homework assignment, it would be to read later Psalm 121, because Psalm 121 was written as the worshipers were traveling to Jerusalem, and, and the, the, the land of the land, the land there is actually somewhat uh, hilly there, so foothills, and so it's very common for God's people as they were making their way to worship in Jerusalem, they would often ascend up to the hill of the Lord, which referenced so often the tabernacle or the temple where God's presence was known to dwell. And there was great anticipation as the people of God walked and marched toward the city of Jerusalem for worship, which Psalm 121 tells us. And so I'm going to share with you just a, a couple of quotes about worship as we think about David's great desire and about our great desire as God's people to be in his presence today. Martin Luther said this, that nothing else be done in worship that our dear Lord himself talk to us through his holy word and that we in turn talk to him in prayer and in song of praise. We've done that today. He also said in worship, the people assemble. I, I don't know if you felt the holy presence of God as we assembled together in this place, but did you know from the moment you exited your car in the parking lot until the moment you found your seat today, that that is all part of our worship to the Lord? John Cowan said the ultimate purpose of Christian worship 
is union with God. And that is why we gather to join in with the Lord. Um, Irenaeus, a church historian, said, The glory of God is absolutely fully alive. Nothing glorifies God more than a human being made holy. And nothing is more likely to make a person holy than the desire to glorify God. That is all part of our worship today, is to come together in the Lord's house, in His presence, with a great desire for worship. And third and last today, not only do we see our great joy in worship like David, as he wrote the psalm, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I, I'm grateful for technology. I'm grateful for being able to watch worship from the comfort of our homes. For those doing that today, thank you for joining us. But there is absolutely no substitute for being in the Lord's house there's great desire in worship, and then third, there's great service in worship. And David said it this way, I, I find this so ironic, because Jerusalem, to be known, um, to be known for so much in the story of God's people throughout the ages, as you know, it is without a doubt a place of great conflict over the years. And David said in Psalm 122 verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the peace of the city, David says, and, and, and we pray that not only for Jerusalem as scripture instructs us to do, but, but we pray for peace within our own city, amen? We pray for peace within our own communities and within our nation, we pray for not only the peace that that would show externally, but, but ultimately, verse 8, David says, for the sake of my brothers and my friends, if, if you please will not miss this in verse 8, I will now say, may peace be within you. And that is ultimately the peace today that we celebrate. The peace that is within us because of a right relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. David says, I want to read it again, verse 8, I will now say, may peace be within you. And folks, today as we have gathered, I encourage you to join me in praying for not, not only the peace of our communities, but pray for the peace within the hearts of men and women boys and girls, because we know today as God's people, that that peace only comes through a right relationship with Jesus Christ. That kind of peace that David writes about, and, and we know today that, that levels of anxiety are higher than perhaps they've ever been in recent years or even decades. We, we know today that that stresses due to all of the external circumstances that we are seeing are, are elevated. We know today that, that the enemy is working so very hard to do whatever he can to distract not only God's people, but to turn people away from the Lord God. And today, that peace that is within you is the peace that comes through true worship of our great God. And I would pray today and invite you to not only have great joy in worship, to not only have a great desire to worship the Lord, but to have great service in worship because part of our worship is being a witness and a testimony to who Jesus is. There, there's something miraculous that happens when God's people gather together and you heard as Kelly said earlier it does take a village to raise a child many of your parents know that and your children are grown and you've done well and the rest of us are learning it does take 
a village, and part of that village is a community of worshipers like Eau Claire and other Bible-believing churches. And so as we close today, our time together, I invite you to stay with the psalmist. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Give thanks to the name of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and our own cities. Pray they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. And as we pray together today, I invite you, if you do not have this peace, and I trust that you do, but if you do not have this peace, whether you're here with us now or watching online today, I invite you to turn to the Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen? He's the one who can carry us in the midst of a pandemic. He's the one who can carry us through times of isolation. Please remember to pray for our widows and those who are going through a time of isolation, uh, in hospitalization, those who cannot have visitors, please remember to pray for them. It is the Lord Jesus who is the one, church, amen, who can carry us in times that we're facing right now and in our culture and in our world. And I pray today that the peace of God would reign, as the psalmist said, within your hearts and within your life. And I'd like to pray now with me a prayer for peace. Would you bow as we pray together before we sing our last hymn? Lord Jesus, thank you for being the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord, for being the one who can bring a calm, peace, and assurance in our lives in the midst of times of extreme anxiety and worry and uncertainty. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the one who can bring peace within our hearts and within our lives when so much around us seems to falter and to fail. Father, our hearts truly grieve for, uh, for those who have suffered greatly through this pandemic. Lord, for those who have lost loved ones, for those who are dealing with sickness, for those who are dealing with the struggles of life just not being normal. Lord Jesus, today, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray that your words of peace would sink deep into our hearts and into our lives. Lord Jesus, you are the one who can calm the storm. Lord, you are the one who can, who can bring quiet the wind and bring still the waves. Lord, you are the one that can focus our hearts and our minds upon you for hope and, Lord, for comfort and for assurance. Lord, today, as we have worshipped, it has been good to be in your house. We continue to pray for your protection. But Lord, ultimately, we pray for the peace of the Lord Jesus to reign in and through and ultimately within our hearts and our lives. And we pray it today in the powerful, mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said together, Amen. Would you stand with us as we see our closing hymn, Higher Breath? Please stand with us as we sing. <laughs>
with us. Such a surprise to see you. We're so grateful. And along with everyone else who came today, thank you uh, for our benediction. Jenny, I would ask you if you would actually have a closing prayer for us. And as we conclude, I, I pray the Lord bless you, keep you, may his face shine upon you, and give you peace. And uh, Jenny, if you would close us in a prayer, and then we'll be dismissed together. So good to see you today. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for being here to worship with us in pre present here and online as well. Pastor Jimmy. Morning, your hand is with me later on this church for since the time of this session. You have had so many wonderful 